welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial and giving you a bit of a review on the new Violet Voss Hashtag palette. This is available online on the Violet Voss website and also on the Sephora website. And there are the shades in here. It's following along the same sort of lines as a lot of the Sunset palettes that have been released lately. Um, and I haven't really jumped on board with that, but this one just looked... I don't know, intriguing to me or something. Um, particularly the purple row down at the bottom here. They just look very pretty. And there's a nice mix of mattes and metallic shadows in here. I don't really tend to gravitate towards all shimmer palettes or all matte palettes, so this is right up my alley. And I hadn't tried anything from Violet Voss, so I was intrigued on that front as well. I picked this up on the Sephora website. I paid 60 Canadian for it. I haven't looked up the American price, but it's going to be less than the Canadian because everything in the States is. So you're probably looking in the 50 range, maybe 48, somewhere around there. Uh, so, and this just arrived a little while ago. So I dug into it and put it on my eyeballs today. So uh, what I can say from the amount that I have played with it is that the shadows do blend beautifully, particularly the mattes. The black gave me a little bit of a problem, but you'll see in the voiceover portion of this video that it really wasn't an issue, like it really, really wasn't. It's just going to come down to the brushes that you use. So when I first applied it, I went in with um, a Makeup Forever 212 brush. So it's kind of like a pencil brush, but it's a bit more flexible, but it's not great for blending, and you'll see that. I did use this knowing that it wasn't going to be good for blending, but it is really good for placement and because it's so nice and precise. I put it in the inner and the outer portions of my lids and so in the tutorial it looks really messy at first, but that's okay um, because then I went in with a clean brush and blended it all out and it did blend quite well. So I'm also going to insert um, swatches for you as well. and. When I do my swatches, um, I just do an unprimed arm. I kind of swirl my finger in the pan, maybe like two, three times around, and then one swipe down. Didn't do brush swatches, I only did my finger. It just gives you an idea of what the colors look like. Um, swatches are problematic. Sometimes they apply differently. Your skin tone's gonna play a role as well, but it gives you an idea of how they perform, and I have to say there really are no duds in here. The mattes, are very pigmented and very smooth. There's full pigment from sort of the, the beginning of the swipe until the end without, you know, that patchiness that you sometimes see with mattes. And the foiled shadows are just stunning. Uh, I'll give you just a few examples here just on my fingers. So there are two matte shades and then two metallic shades. And they really are beautiful. So you're getting 20 pans in this palette and you do get a very good mix of shades. So you have really good, just intelligent choices for mattes. You have a cream, you've got black, you've got some nice warmer browns in here. You've got like this beautiful cranberry shade down here and then an orange over here. And then you have all your metallics. I personally could have done without all three of these uh, because they are kind of similar. And then the three, like one, two, three, probably could have been pared down to one or two for my personal preferences as well. However, they do all play well together, and I think that you can create an awful lot of looks using this palette. Um, you're not going to get wedged into, like, just using these four, just these four together. They all, like, you can mix and match, and they're all going to work really well together. In terms of the packaging, it is quite compact, like, it's not overly thick. It's the sturdy cardboard packaging. It does open right up and bend over on itself, and it does come with a very large mirror. Um, it feels quite sturdy. The magnetic closure, let's see. Yep, magnetic closure is pretty secure there as well. And there's really just not an awful lot of fuss to it. I do like that the names of the shadows are printed right on the packaging, and that it's dark packaging with light letters. I don't like when it's light packaging with light letters because it makes me feel old because I can't read it. It's just not enough contrast. So I like the way that this is done and first impressions, I really do like this palette. Um, I will continue to play around with it. For this video, I've only done one eye look for you. 
However, I do post more pictures on my Instagram of looks that never make it onto YouTube, so I will link it down below if you want to check out my Instagram. That information will be in the down bar for you. So without any further ado, let's get into the swatches and the eye look. Okay, so starting from here, we have Fresh, Sauce, Savage, Goat, or G-O-A-T, I guess, uh, greatest of all time, I imagine. I-L-Y, I love you. Not the most pigmented black I've ever come across, but sometimes that's kind of nice for blending purposes because it's not quite so overwhelming. Truth, Lady Boss, No Filter, Throwback, and Lit. And then here we have Vacay, Goals, FOMO, Low Key, Living, Sunset, Relevant, TBT, Petty AF, and Life. So I primed my eyes using the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and I set that with Fresh. And now I'm just applying Sauce to the transition area there for the sake of having something to blend darker shadows into. Now I'm picking up GOAT on a different blending brush. I'm applying it largely where I put that first shade, but I am keeping it just a little bit lower just so that there is a little bit of a grady, uh, gradation. So here's where you'll see that the black does apply slightly patchy. It's certainly not the worst black I've ever worked with, but again, I do think a large portion of that is due to the brush that I'm using and I knew that it wouldn't blend it properly which is why I go in with another brush but I like this one for precise placement. I didn't use any product on this brush it's just to blend out what I had applied with the previous one. It's a bit of a process, but you kind of have to have patience when you're working with black shadow. And then just blending out those edges some more with that fluffy brush from step two. Concealer would work here as well. I'm applying it for two reasons, to give the shadow something to stick to and also to amp up the payoff of the shadow that I'm going to apply on top of it that shadow being relevant. Spritz. It's difficult to tell from the angle of filming, but I'm really more patting it on at first and then sort of dragging it around to cover that space that I want on my lid. Then I just went back in with the Real Techniques brush to again blend the edges so that the black is kind of seamless with that relevant shade. Applying metallic shadows with your finger just gives so much payoff, and I really wanted to amp it up here. The shadow is called Life, and I just buffed that into my lower lash line and blended it out a little bit lower than I normally do. And then I used the shade Sauce to help blend out the edges. I used Fresh to help sort of erase some of the black that had blended out a little bit further than I wanted it to. Aside from Fresh, there really isn't a brow bone shade in the palette, so I used Flexitarian from ColourPop to apply. And then I went in with Truth to add a pop of color to the inner corner. Something a little bit different for me, but I thought it kind of went well with the other colors that are on there. I didn't pick up any additional product, but I'm just trying to make those edges seamless with each other. Eye Booster Liner is life. I love this thing. And I tested out a new Maybelline mascara as well. For liner, I actually used a lip liner in the shade Plum Together because I didn't have an eyeliner in the shade I wanted. And then I realized that I forgot to film any sort of close-up. 
Thankfully, I took pictures for thumbnails. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, there's, there's two of me. Uh, anytime I end up like at the Sephora store, I'm always wearing a white shirt as well, and then I'm like swatching red lipsticks, and it's just, it's unnecessary anxiety. It's really, it's, it's unnecessary.